In this movie, you create an animated bitmap to simulate a spinning propeller. As you will find out, the effect will look convincing without taxing render time. Go back to the file you saved where you set up the propeller to spin at a constant speed. If you need to, you can use the file name p47propellerpropspin.max you downloaded for this tutorial. Scrub the animation and verify that the propeller is spinning at a constant speed. You need to render out the propeller separately, and you need a camera shot perpendicular to the propeller. Press Alt-W to switch back to a 4 viewport configuration. In the left view, create a free camera. Using the Align tool, align it to the propeller, pivot to pivot, in position and orientation. Right-click the camera view, and then press C to view the new camera in that viewport. Next, use the Dolly Camera tool to move the camera back while keeping it in the propeller axis. Next, go to the Render dialog and set the output size to a custom 512 by 512 resolution. Now adjust the Dolly until the propeller fills the space defined by the save frames without going over. Scrub the animation to ensure all three blades are never outside the yellow borders. Select and isolate the propeller. Go to the Environment dialog and switch off the background image. Replace it with a white background. Try a test render. The propeller is rendered against the white background. Actually, save this image out, you'll need it later. Give it the name and type propeller.png. Save it as a 24-bit image with alpha channel. Next, add a motion blur effect as you did in the previous movie. In the Renderer tab, enable motion blur with a shutter speed of 3 and an offset of minus 1.5. Set the motion segments to 10 and the samples to 48. These values are given for reference. Feel free to experiment with your own. Test render the scene. The propeller is blurred, but keep in mind you're mostly interested in the transparency effect shown in the alpha channel. Also, and because of how you keyframe the animation, you'll only need to render out 10 frames of the animation. At the start, you have a blade pointing straight up, and that is repeated every 10 frames throughout the animation. Switch back to the Common tab in the Rendering dialog and set the time output range from 0 to 9. That would render the first 10 frames of the animation. In the Render Output group, click on Files and specify an output file, such as prop-opc-underscore.png. You'll also need to specify a folder for the images to be saved. Choose the same one where you stored the scene files. Again, choose a 24-bit type with alpha, and choose OK. Render the animation. Even though it's using motion blur, it shouldn't take too long to render. At the end of it, you should have 10 frames rendered and ready for use. Reopen the same max file without saving it. Double-click the plain body to select it and all its children, and hide the selection. From the Selection Sets list, choose P47 In-Flight and click Yes to dismiss the warning. Switch the viewport to the Camera Fly viewpoint. Here you have an animated plane on a path, but it has no propeller. Create a plane object and set its length and width values to 200. Name it Propeller Proxy. Make sure you are at frame 0, and then align the new object to the P47, pivot to pivot, in position and orientation. Move it locally on the z-axis until it is in the correct position. Go to the Slate Material Editor. Create a new standard material and apply it to the Propeller Proxy object. 
Set this color to black for now. You can change that later if you need to experiment. Drag out the Opacity Channel node and apply a standard bitmap to it. Browse and select the first bitmap in the rendered propeller sequence and make sure the Sequence option is selected. Click Open. A dialog appears that will help you create an image file list IFL file. An IFL file is a text file that will tell 3ds Max how to display a sequence of images for animation purposes. Click OK to proceed. Double-click the bitmap node in the material editor to see its properties. Scroll down a bit and under Mono Channel Output set the option to Alpha. Also set the RGB channel output to Alpha as Gray. This way transparency will be based on Alpha information instead of pixel color. Do a test render to view the results. Of course, if you scrub the animation, the propeller doesn't follow the plane yet. At frame 0, use the Link tool to link the propeller to the plane. Try a test render at frames 40, and 100. Notice that at frame 100, the propeller is not visible. The material needs to render both sides of the flat surface. In the Material Editor, double-click the standard material node and set it to two-sided. Try it again. It should work better now. You can help the effect by making the propeller circle more defined. In the Material Editor, insert a composite map to the existing material using the current opacity map in the Layer 1 slot. Double-click the composite node to see its properties. With only one layer, the effect is identical to what it was a second ago. Add another layer to the composite map. In Layer 2, use a gradient ramp. This overrides the propeller map. You need to set the blending mode to Addition for a cumulative effect. Double-click the Gradient Ramp node to adjust the gradient. Also, double-click the icon to see the gradient definition better. You may also want to enlarge the Composite Map icon to better study the end results. Switch the gradient type to Radial. You need the outside to be totally transparent, so change that gradient flag color to black. You are here using grayscale effect ranging from black being totally transparent to white being totally opaque. Set another flag at about 95% and also set it to full black. This ensures the outer perimeter is totally transparent. Create another flag at around 90% and set it to medium gray. The positions mentioned here at 90% and 95% are given as approximations as they seem to work well with the three-bladed bitmap underneath. Set the remaining middle flag to be positioned at 80% and give it a darker gray color. Set the first existing flag to an even darker gray that is not totally black. Again, feel free to experiment with values you feel give you the better results. Render again. If you feel the effect is too opaque, you can change the gradient values. Even easier, you can simply tone down the opacity of the gradient layer in the composite map. Render again. Once you are satisfied, Consider that you can also work on the diffuse map accordingly. Try a radial gradient ramp as a diffuse map. Consider a red-white outer color gradually turning to black towards the center. Some propellers have color markings on the outside. Once you're happy with the results, you can render the animation to disk. You will find out that this animation will render in less than 10 minutes, whereas the one with motion blur takes hours. If you decide to render this animation, a propeller sound effect has been provided for your convenience. As always, a rendered result has also been provided. You learned how to create the animated bitmap using 3ds Max only.
In the next movie, you learn to create a similar effect using compositing software.